Let's tackle a medium difficulty problem here. Uh, I'm going to show you two ways of uh, solving this problem. One that's a little bit longer, uh, makes a lot of sense if you're just starting out with these problems. And I'm gonna also going to use an abbreviated version that shows you how to do this problem really quickly if you're crunched for time. So let's start out, uh, write our givens and our finds uh, after we read the problem, right? So let's read the problem. James makes a deposit of $10,000 in an account at the end of every year. After five years, he receives a raise, and then he can make deposits of $12,000. Question asks, what's the balance in the account after eight years if we assume an APR of 4% compounded yearly? Okay, so let's write out our givens and what we need to find. Now, it's clear from this problem that we're going to have to deal with two different series because we have $10,000 in one period and $12,000 uh, per year for a different period. So let's start out and write A1 is equal to $10,000. That's our first series of payments. And we're going to be making those series of payments for a number of interest periods of five. And remember, these is, this is in per year, this is in years, and we're given an interest rate I of 4% APR, which is in years. So our units are consistent, and that's good. Our second series of payments, A2, is going to be $12,000 per year. Number of years, which is the number of interest periods, is going to be three years because we have, we're looking for our balance after eight years, so eight minus five is three. And our interest rate is constant uh, at 4% APR. Again, we have uh, consistent units and that's good. And our find in this case is F, I'm going to write at year eight, just to be consistent. So let's draw out the cash flow diagram. That's going to be very helpful for us in this problem. Okay, uh, We're going to start out at time zero, and we're going to make a series of, of regular investments. Uh, draw our line here. We're going to make a series of regular investments uh, for five years, two, three, four, and five. Uh, we're going to make a regular series uh, for the next three years of a greater amount, uh, 12,000. and Let's label this A, where we have two series, A1 is equal to 10,000, and A2 is equal to 12,000. If we draw our, our cash flow diagram relatively clearly, we can see by the length of the arrows that we have two different series. And uh, remember to include F here. That's what we're concerned with, is what's this amount, F? And we'll label this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 years. Point of view, let's just call this point of view James. James is the investor. All right. You can see from this cash flow diagram that we're going to have to break this up into two different sets. We have this initial investment uh, for five years, which is going to result in some balance uh, that we're going to carry forward to year eight. But then from uh, years six, seven, and eight, we make different series of payments, which is going to result in a different future value. So we need to break this problem up, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's start out by dealing with just the first five years. And rather than draw out another cash flow diagram, uh, just, for, just to keep this short, I'm just going to write out the factor formula for you. So uh, F is equal to A, because we're dealing with a regular series of payments, multiplied by the F slash A factor. 4% uh, here, and for we're talking about five, well, the first five year period. Uh, we're going to say it's $10,000 multiplied by the F slash A factor, 4% uh, in five years. So let's go to the table. I've got it open to 4% already. Uh, remember what we're concerned with is, uh, is what is the F slash A factor uh, for five years on this 4% table, and you can see it's 4.246. So we're going to multiply that by 4. Uh, let's, go, let's go back here. I think I might have the wrong one. We're going to go to the interest tables, 4%. We're looking for five years. There, I almost pulled the wrong one. We're looking for, we, we need to put in 5.416. Almost made an error. And that's going to give us $54,160. Okay? Now remember, that's the balance in year five. 
that amount of money is going to stay in the account. So we need to make sure that it earns interest for the next three years when we deal, while we deal with this uh, second series. Okay. Now the second series, I'm going to draw the cash flow diagram for you because I think that will help. Uh, we're going to start in time zero. Remember, we're going to take the balance of the account, this 54000 We're going to keep it in there. Uh, and then we're going to add to it the series of three investments. Let's redraw that line. We have a series of three investments. That's period one, period two, period three. We're looking for the future value F. Let's label this. This is 54,160. And A here for these is going to equal $12,000 uh, per year. Now it's clear from this cash flow diagram that we have to use two different factors to solve. We have a principal investment that we need to carry forward and find the future value of. We also have a series of investments that we need to find the future value of. So what we're going to do is we're just going to write out F is equal to P, this initial investment, uh, and we're going to use the F slash P. Remember we're at 4%. And this time we're dealing with three years, and then we're going to add it to the series A, uh, F slash A, to the 4%, and that also is for a period of three years. So to solve, 54,160 multiplied by F slash P, remember, 4 and 3, and so F slash P uh, for three years at a 4% is this right here, 1.125. 1.125. We're going to add our series of payments, 12,000. Um, and we're looking for the F slash A factor at three years. Now the A, F slash A factor is 3.122. 3.122. And that gives us 98,394. And that's the answer. Now let's look and see if that makes sense. Sure, it does, right? For five years, we're making $10,000 investments. For the next three years, $12,000 investments. We're carrying forward an interest rate of 4%. We're in the ballpark. Now I'm going to show you really quickly here how you can use how you can do this all in one step. All right? Now if you're starting to get savvy with these problems, you can look at this initial cash flow diagram and you can see, all right, I have this one series of investments here for the first five years and I know I'm going to result in some value here that I'm going to have to carry forward to year eight and then I have this other other series here of twelve thousand dollars what we can do with this is we can just say F is equal to this A1 our first series uh, multiplied by the F slash A factor uh, four percent and five years uh, we're going to carry this forward in the problem for the other three years. So we would need the F slash P factor here, 4% for three years, right? Because we're looking for the future value of that balance three years later. And then simply we add our A2 multiplied by F slash A, 4%. And that's for three years because it's three years away from that future time. And if we write these out uh, really briefly here, we end up with uh, $10,000 multiplied by our F slash A factor. That was 5.416, okay, plus, or erase that there. And we're going to multiply that, remember, again, by the F slash P factor of 4% uh, in three years. That's 1.125. Add that to our $12,000 multiplied by the F slash A factor, 4% in three years. That was 3.122. And if we calculate that out, that gives us $98,394. And that's just a quicker way to do the problem. If we understand uh, how we're going to break the problem up into these two units and that we have to carry that balance forward.